We've made tremendous advances in recent years, but even so, we've probably underestimated how difficult it is to fully understand how a human being works. My name is Paul Nurse. I'm president of the Royal Society. That's the UK's uh, National Academy of Science. And I'm also the director of the Francis Crick Institute. But in addition to doing that, I'm actually still an active researcher. And I work on cell biology using genetics to understand uh, basic problems about the cell. In particular, what controls the division of cells from one to two to four to eight, and also what controls the shapes of cells. These are pretty basic problems, important for biology, important for development, but also important for certain diseases, particularly cancer. The cell cycle is the uh, period between the birth of a cell and its subsequent division. And the work that I'm, or my laboratory has been carrying out is what actually regulates the transition through the different events that are needed for the reproduction of the cell. Because what's got to happen is you have to copy the DNA, that's the um, hereditary material, and once that's copied, you've got to separate it, segregate it into the two newly divided cells. So the work my lab has been doing is um, focusing on what controls those two events, how are they linked together, how are they linked with the growth of the cell, what happens if something goes wrong, and how can you deal with that before you proceed to the next steps? And these are all fundamental questions about cell reproduction and are necessary to ensure that a cell receives the full uh, genetic complement, all the genes. Because if it doesn't do that, it becomes damaged. And that means if you're a single-celled organism, and I work on a single-celled organism yeast, then it's likely to die. And if it's in a, um, a body like our own, then it could be damaged and generate a cancerous cell. So that's why we're working today on the details of those processes. The way I like to think about my work is that it provides the, the right framework to think about problems like cancer. It's not that it is directly going to lead to new cures or treatments. It's more that without understanding how a cell reproduces itself, you can't think properly about the problem. You can't think about the way in which it might go wrong in cancer and the way you may treat it. So it's like sort of developing the right cultural background for understanding the biological problem. I think one thing that we all underestimate is just how complicated we are. Um, we, we've made tremendous advances in recent years, but even so, we've probably underestimated how difficult it is to fully understand how a human being works. But what's happening today is the convergence of a variety of different approaches and understanding, which I think is going to rapidly advance um, our knowledge of how we do work. The starting point for that was the sequencing of the human genome. What that did was to identify the 25,000 genes that are necessary um, for our, our proper growth and development. And that was necessary, if you like, to get the, the names of the actors in the play. And now we have to write the play. And that play is very complicated. And we're, uh, we, we start with that genomic analysis. And now we have different ways of taking that into understanding how we work and how we go wrong in disease. And that will include uh, monitoring many more components in cells and in tissues and organs and how they may change in different diseases. It, it, it requires how, uh, describing how those different components interact one with another to generate the processes that we, we see in life. And also, uh, how actually we, we can generate some of the extraordinary things about life. Just, just look at me. Here I'm a body. How did I come about? Why is my head the size it is? Why do I have five fingers? All of these are sort of simply stated, but very interesting biologically, and also very important for disease. I think probably what is different about today is the coming together of scientists from different disciplines and applying to this problem of what life is and how it works, not only biologists, not only medically trained scientists, but physicists, chemists, engineers, computer scientists, mathematicians, all working together and bringing their own specialised knowledge to the problem of understanding the complexity of what it is to be human. 
And we shouldn't forget the humanities either, because they also help us understand what it is to be human. And I strongly believe it's only by breaking down those barriers between the different disciplines that we're going to get enough scientific firepower to really tackle these sorts of problems. And that's combined, those sort of different cultures and different scientific understandings, that's combined with great new technologies. The ability to sequence DNA, the ability to uh, define all the different components in cells, the RNA, proteins, enzymes, and so on, that are there. The ability to image under a microscope what's happening in cells and tissues, or in um, sophisticated imaging machines, what's happening to the whole body. And it's the combination of this good thinking and this new technology that I think is going to really push our understanding um, in the future, and in, indeed the, the, the near future. <laughs>